Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the show. I hope you're having a great day. This is going to be a fun one, guys. Uh, I tell you what, as you know, if you don't already, um, I love learning about different vehicles, especially like big vehicles lately, but uh, learning about like emergency vehicles, that type of deal. Well, I like learning about cars too, especially cars we didn't really get or, or follow closely here in the United States. And this is totally different than the average American car, that's for sure. We're looking at the Citroen 2CV. Uh, the title of this one is the Citroen 2CV looks like a snail and drives like a waterbed, but here's why it's awesome. <laughs> I'd have to agree. Uh, my first impressions of this thing is it is pretty weird, but I'm intrigued. I think it may be awesome. I'm going to link a video at the end of mine. You got to check it out. It's uh, We just got back from Nashville, Tennessee recently. And uh, they had an awesome museum there, which I will be posting the whole thing, a walkthrough uh, where I discover some amazing cars from around the world. One of them I got to sit in and, and, and touch and feel, right, was a Citroen 2CV. And it was really, really fun. I would love to drive something like this sometime. And uh, it is hilarious video where I try and fit in one of these. And surprisingly, it actually had more room than I thought. But it was pretty shocking, just totally different than any car I've ever been in. But I digress. It is time to learn more in depth about this car. This video was actually suggested to me by plenty of you in the comments of that video. So thank you guys for that. This is from TFL Classics. It will be linked in the description down below. I will not be viewing the whole thing. I will be skipping around. So please make sure to use that link down there, watch the whole thing, and check their channel out. Let's take a dive into the 2CV. Here we built go. these cars from 1948 through 1990. Incredibly popular, not only in France, but okay. all around the world. They built them in several locations, but they never were really sold here in the US, partly right. because they're a little bit slow. Let's pop the hood. This one's cool. Uh, notice it is black and yellow two-tone, kind of an odd combo on a car like this, but it's, it's quirky, right? I like it. The one I uh, sat in was all like a powder blue, kind of like the color of the sky in the background. But it, it's got that kind of design where it can work with two-tone, you know, with these flared out fenders and then the uh, body lines in the middle. I do like the grill and their logo. I think it's an interesting car. <laughs> now to open the hood on a two I love how small the tires are. TV, there are no levers to pull. Rather, you just reach underneath the front bumper. There's this simple piece of wire. It kind of feels like a coat hanger. Pull up what? on that and then you can lift up on the hood. Oh, wow. Now the hood is positively enormous as is the hood rod and the hood <laughs> yeah, rod latches is. here in the middle because the hood Ooh, itself it's is incredibly super flimsy all two cvs are powered by just two cylinders Shh. they are horizontally opposed and air-cooled cylinders so kind of like half of a volkswagen beetle engine wow. but more like an old bmw motorcycle engine now very interesting the horsepower output i mentioned two cvs stood for two steam horses that translated to just nine horsepower when this car launched in the late oh 1940s. My God. <laughs> and that was from 375 cc's of fury. They then upped it to over 400. We have a golf cart on our property and that has 13 horsepower. So that is literally more a golf cart than this. But uh, needless to say, this car is not about power for sure. I, I think you guys mentioned that later versions had a little more power. The thing is, I admire this car because of how basic it is i think i've said that before for some reason i'm attracted to cars that are like very utilitarian very basic and just made for kind of work and durability uh so kind of like the anti-luxury car right a car that just put together and and no frills no luxury no leather none of that like it's just very uh gutted but made for a purpose right and i think this car falls under that for sure it looks like it's extremely easy to work on i remember by the way uh, when I sat in it, you could just feel the whole car was so light, like the doors were feather light. And it's kind of cool in a way, right? It's weird, and it's definitely unlike a lot of modern cars, but it has its own charm. And uh, I imagine driving it would be just as fun. Of course, it's not going to be fast, but it's going to have this feeling that you're never going to find in a newer vehicle. 100 cc's, And this one, being the 2CV6, has the largest engine they offered. 602 cc so oh, that's pretty big this motor that makes car. a whopping 29 horsepower there you go the little 2cv was designed to be as simple as possible to manufacture as cheap as possible to manufacture and as basic as possible to fix and there's a lot cool. of really clever engineering and able to achieve those missions a lot of really kind of clever and simple design touches that you don't see really in a lot of other cars so okay. let's talk about the doors now first of all 
the door handles yeah, are bizarre. They are. This door handle is locked right now. And as you can see, you can spin it around 360 degrees in both directions. <laughs> so when you go to unlock the door, you simply put the key in the slot, turn the key, and then you have to spin it until spin it, it catches. Spin it all the way over? Yeah. And then you can unlatch the door. What they're doing here, rather than incorporating a standard door lock, when you lock the door, you're simply disconnecting the handle from the latch, which is pretty weird. Now, the pros are very easy to make, very simple, and unlikely to break. So it's not technically locking. It's just simulating locking by disconnecting the latch completely, and you can't open it. That is weird, for sure. Though, that you can't actually lock a 2CV from the inside. You have to get the key out and stick it in the oh, slot. Okay or you can't lock the car. Gotcha. Then we come to the door construction. These Love doors the are wheels. paper thin. <laughs> They're yes. incredibly thin. Paper thin, I totally, that was the biggest thing that stood out to me, IBC, because you interact with the door first. It was just super thin and super light. It, uh, yeah, definitely not like a big American truck or something that you would be used to seeing over here. Totally the opposite. But like I said, it was refreshing. It was so different and lightweight and uh, it just, felt fun like it felt fun sitting still i really would love to try something like this i mean this is a cool car man it's and, weird you know by modern standards really flimsy but keep in mind this was not a car designed for safety this was a car designed to get folks to church in post-war france mm -hmm. uh, and that's just the beginning of the door weirdness the rear door handles are the opposite of the front door handle so there's oh, no yeah. way to lock or unlock them from the, the outside museum. what you have to do instead is flick a little lever on the inside and then they're permanently locked from the wow. outside. And then to unlock them, you need unlock those from... lanky French arms. You reach all the way in. <laughs> there you go. Ah. And then plop them open. Nice. The windows on a 2CV are one of the best parts of the car because there are no window winders, obviously no electric windows. Instead, you've got a hinged window that oh, hinges about halfway up open? the design. So push in on this latch located halfway through the door. That unhooks the window and then you simply grab them oh my and God, open them up funny. toward the top of and the door frame in. and then up here there's a little bunion with a wire just a piece of wire in there that hooks into a slot and that's how they secure into no place way. to close the window oh my God. push the little lever on the bunion and then you can pull them closed now there's a couple issues with this design first of all there's no way to grab the window from the inside so instead you just have to let it slam but they did think of something pretty clever if you don't want to open the window all the way you can use this little piece of bent ah. wire stick it into this latch and then you've got you know a little bent you've window. got a little and the rear window there. of the oh, 2cv cool. doesn't go down whatsoever it's and fixed. one more fun okay. piece of 2cv window trivia these third windows the rear quarter windows not every 2cv had these the early ones wow. just had a piece of sheet metal here these came later in the production cycle that uh sticker might have been i don't know some old registration or something it said czech republic 2009 very interesting so so two CVs are convertibles, and you're probably thinking, what a premium feature to give 1940s French farmers. Yeah, but in that fact, is weird. a big reason they're convertibles is because it meant Citroën got to use less steel. But oh, they work in a okay. really kind of unconventional French way. So let's fold the top back. So it wasn't a luxury CV. feature so per se. It's actually a cost-cutting feature, like no roof. <laughs> first, we need to gotcha. unlatch the header bar. So fold down the sun visors. They right. flip out of the way. And then there are two latches, one on okay. each side. Flip them up, and then we can move on to step two. Easy enough. The next step is to fold back the front portion of the roof then into this sunroof mode, which is a nice feature it. to have. And then there's a little button clasp here. You're going to want to undo that and then lift up on the top portion of this oh, panel. You want to fold okay. the header bar back. And then you can see the whole roof wow. is just kind of not attached to anything. This is how we actually fold it into the retracted position. So now we can start the right, process of okay. rolling up the roof. That's right, you physically have to grab it and kind of... Which the car I sat in at the uh, Lane Museum in Nashville, Tennessee, had the roof retracted back for sure. I remember that. It was all folded back here. Very interesting that they all came Obviously like that. Obviously, it's a non-power like assisted rack, although this one does have a steering lock, which was pretty advanced. Wow. This one is a 1982, so it's one of the later 2CVs. And yeah, and if you look at the video, if you didn't see it, if you look at the video I have, uh, I'll have on the end screen of this video, uh, my video where I sit in one of these. It said on the sign it was a 1964. I don't know why, if that is wrong. Uh, so that's just what it says on the sign at the exhibit there. Uh, but people with closer looks... Uh, People in the comments said uh, the number plate it had on there, I believe, was a Dutch number plate. 
And between that and some cues um, in the vehicle that they they saw, I think the one that I sat in was around this time as well. I think it was a 1981 or a 1980 model year, uh, people thought in the comments. So maybe check that out and see if you agree. I don't think it was a 64. That does seem too old. 80 sounds more uh, And accurate. as such, it has a plastic steering wheel with a single spoke. Uh -huh. um, Citroen was very well known for doing these single spoke steering wheels. The idea very is weird. a little bit safer in an accident, and you can clearly see all the gauges without you know having it is very weird just because i've never seen a car ever have a single spoke steering wheel like that before uh but i i guess it makes sense how you would have more visibility through it and it could be safer i suppose as well rather than having all these spokes all over the place so very interesting citroen i i'll be honest this is what this is about this channel is about me learning about so many different things around the world and as a diehard car guy my whole life i just I guess I was still through a scope, right? I, I don't know about some car companies, especially when we're talking about some of the Euro companies that we just didn't really get here on a big level, like Citroen. Like, they're seeming very interesting to me. I really don't know much about them. I love some of the rally cars that I've seen. That's about it. Uh, and now I'm discovering more about just their normal cars. And I like it. I mean, they're very, and I mean this in a good way. They're very odd. They're very peculiar. They're they seem unique and different than a lot of other cars, and uh, I like it. They had they had some forward thinking ideas. I think, yeah. Spokes and stuff to interrupt your field of view. The early cars did not have a single spoke steering wheel. They were just a like a steel wheel with a couple spokes. But the later cars have a plastic safety wheel. Mm. So the gauge cluster on a two CV is a very simple piece of equipment. Once yeah. again, to save money and cost. Uh, people said notice the shift pattern. Shift pattern is weird because every manual and transmission car I've owned, including one I own right now. Uh, of course, you know, first would be up to the left, then down to second, up to third, down to fourth, up to fifth. This is down to first, up to second. You see that? So two and four are up top, one and three are down below. And of course, reverse is up to the left, which is just super weird, right? I've Again, I've never owned a manual transmission with that shift pattern. So that is uh, foreign to me for sure. But yeah, very simple. Although it's very clear, very readable, right? Big speedometer, of course, your fuel gauge and... Uh, battery Actually, like a voltmeter down there. The older cars were there. even simpler. They just had one dial that was for the speedometer. And fun fact about the oldest two CVs, the wiper controls were actually hooked into the speedo cable. So you could either uh, have your speed or have windshield wipers. And then if you came to a stop, your windshield wipers would stop altogether. So probably the what? craziest <laughs> thing about any two CV, the shifter. shifter. It looks like an yeah, umbrella well, handle what with is a that? pool ball bolted to the end of it. So really weird. funky, but really easy to use once you get used to it. And very, very intuitive. Now the shifter kind of pivots in and out on this what? rod, and then it twists left and right. And that's really how you change gears. And it's sort of similar to what? a conventional H pattern when you think about it. Now it's a dog. I would have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> leg first gear. So first gear, twist to the left and pull back. And you can see the whole what? stick extends backwards. Second gear, <laughs> center the stick and push forward. Third gear, Ooh, pass through okay. neutral and pull back. And then fourth gear, twist to the right and push forward. So oh, really, so you got one, two, three, and then four. Two and three are in line because that's what you want on, for example, the Nuremberg Ring or Laguna Seca. I admit, once you drive that for a while and get used to it, get that muscle memory where it feels natural... I can see this being actually possibly better, like more smooth and efficient than a typical H pattern gearbox. I don't know. It, it actually seems like pretty fluid, right? But it's so weird to me from someone who's used to only an H pattern, especially the conventional uh, number alignment, like I was saying, that I would just, I would look like a fool trying to try this at first. It would be weird because it's just so not what I'm used to. I've never seen a shifter like that. Wow. But for real, it is actually pretty convenient just having your two most common gears in yeah, and out. Yeah, that does now, make sense. The real magic to this is when you see what's going on when you manipulate this ball and stick. When you pop the hood, you can clearly see what's going on. There's a hole in the firewall. This is where the shifter pops out. Oh, cool. And then it's connected to another rod that literally just simulates an H pattern to the transmission. So check uh, this out. That's first gear there, then second, third, and then fourth. Oh, so just a wow. standard H pattern. It's just the way this, yeah, this actual lever here is doing the H pattern. You're like controlling an extra arm that's <laughs> simulating that. Oh, that is so weird. It seems almost ridiculous. Like you're adding an extra step, 
but it's not. I mean, it's a convenience for the driver, I suppose. And it still works. If it works, it works. That they hinge it into the cab, it gets a little weird with the push and pull. That is What bizarre. the 2CV does better than pretty much any car is demonstrate that clever engineering can be done incredibly cheap with very basic thoughts and can last a really long time. Take, mm -hmm. for example, the headlight design. So a lot of cars have auto leveling headlights and when they go wrong, it can be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to replace. Well, the 2CV has leveling headlights too. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more basic. So the headlights are connected via this rod and they pivot oh, I see that. up and down via a knob on the inside. The idea is if you have loaded up your 2CV with stuff from the farmer's market, you're going to be blinding people at night, twist that knob, bring the headlights down. Very simple. Wow. It almost never breaks unless it's like this car, in which case the cable has seized up and it's broken. But <laughs> it's a very easy thing to fix at least. That is yeah, cool. That's crazy. Just kidding. The headlights do work. I'm sorry, I, I just wasn't twisting hard enough. So there's some pretty oh, weird looking cool. stuff on the front of the 2CV engine, uh, but it really is all very basic familiar things once you figure out what's going on. So for example, this right here. <laughs> so I'm assuming, yeah, the very basic. He said it was a two cylinder horizontally opposed. I'm assuming this is carbureted, right? Uh, and like not much else going on here, right? The very front of the car, you know, almost in front of the cooling fan is the coil. And obviously it's a two cylinder, so you've got one spark plug lead going one way, the right. other spark plug lead going the other. But basically the engine itself on a 2CV starts here and ends here. It's entirely in front of the front axle. And of course, fully air cooled, so there's no radiator, no coolant, nothing like that. Mm. Very, very simple. Now the transmission is behind that. Okay. And then you pretty much have all this empty space that is being used for absolutely nothing. It is a trans axle, but very, very, very cleverly, the brakes are actually inboard on a 2CV. So they're not oh, out here wow. on the edges of the wheels. They are located, basically bolted to the side of the transmission, that is which so is pretty weird. clever. A bunch of other kind of little weird things. It is like, actually clever in this car. It's just, again, so different than most people would be used to. Is this front wheel drive then? That's different as well. Because from my knowledge, front wheel drive was not common before the 80s, you know? like these heater tubes that take hot air off the exhaust manifold and funnel it into the cabin. And I do like the air filter. You just simply twist this panel, That's lift cool. it up, and then you can see there is one very, very, very dirty air filter, which clearly we're <laughs> going to have to change, but then um, plop it back in the middle. That's like a, a uh, lawnmower engine. And yeah, you slot just... it into place. Yeah, Another crazy part about the 2CV, they have a crank start. So they give you a crank, you put it into what? a hole located in the front of the vehicle, and then you twist. Oh, that's sketchy. And now see why people could break their arm doing this. That is so weird. Did you see that? Even me, I have no upper body strength, can crank start a 2CV. So let's check out the trunk space. In <laughs> that is so weird. And yes, if you saw the video, you'll know that this was uh, challenging. We did not know this <laughs> to get out of the car. And that's literally how you just get in and out of the 2CV. And it's even more confusing in the back. For rear passengers, the handle is completely hidden and you wouldn't know where to find it unless you watch this video because it's located down here by the latch. There's this little piece of plastic. Pull up. That's you can funny. See that that never like the hidden like that. And that's yeah. how you get out of the rear seat of a Citroen 2CV. So the suspension in these cars is so weird and it was super... You know, the car is just very odd, but it's got a charm to it, doesn't it? It really does. It is such a unique vehicle. <laughs> Super innovative, and even still, it works incredibly well. But here are the basics. The first thing you need to know is they're incredibly softly sprung. Yes. I am not a strong individual. That I noticed that immediately when I got in. I was like, oh, this thing feels like it's floating. There's one arm, and I mean, you can, you can turn the car was an actually really cool feeling and that's why i would love to drive one of these i feel like it would just be such a wild experience driving one it would feel like you're floating i feel like the ride quality would be amazing and uh, people actually said in the comments that don't be fooled by how soft it is they actually handle pretty well in the fact that you can take a turn pretty fast and it's not going to roll over this thing will lean but it, it's planted if that makes sense so car into a water very bed. interesting but the way it works is you've got independent suspension on all four corners you've got the swing arms and they are attached to springs located down here in the middle of the vehicle by these little push rods essentially so you've got <laughs> leading arms and trailing arms the other end of the vehicle will lift in the opposite direction which gives you this kind of magic carpet like ride especially over oh, speed bumps okay. here's a video of me taking a speed bump at 25 miles an hour and the car it's almost a little unnerving because it lifts and then it falls in the wrong places you expect it to behave differently 
than wow. it really does. But the result of this is that you could drive these cars over a plowed field in France with a basket of eggs without breaking any. That was, of course, one of the infamous design requirements. The other weird... That is cool. That is cool. Part of the suspension is the early cars did not use shock absorbers whatsoever. They had these basically friction dampers. The later cars do have shock absorbers, but you'll notice they are located on their side, which is a little yeah. funky. Yeah. Okay, here comes 602 cc. Okay, it does of have Fury. a key. Good. That's good Ooh. to know. <laughs> and here's how we release the parking brake on a 2CV. Push in on the button, push in, and okay. now we are ready to go. So the shifting thing definitely freaks people out at first, but it's very dirt simple to use once you kind of get the hang of it. What's this thing sound um, like? And then you'll drive it like any other manual. Guarantee within the hour, it's you're gonna have it down squat. And it's a very, very forgiving car to drive. Uh, even though it's not power assisted steering, even though you know the, the brakes are somewhat basic, although this car does have pretty advanced brakes in 1982. Um, it's just all very simple to use and it's a very approachable classic to drive. And if you live on a dirt road like this, <laughs> you'll quickly see the benefits of having such a softly sprung ride because you can take bumps, especially in a straight line in this car, at just about any speed and it'll soak it up. Add to that that this car has, I don't know, eight, nine, ten inches of ground clearance. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll go places you just wouldn't believe. So That's when you're wild. on the road, the power is limited, so I'm doing 30 kilometers an hour in second gear, full throttle. There's oh my 45K, God, I love it. 50K, and 60K there. Top speed in Colorado. See, this is what's fun. You know this car is simple. You know it is, you know, low horsepower. You know it was just made as this, like he said, uh, used to be on farms, used to commute. Um, very basic, economical, affordable car. The funny part is because of this older era, because um, of how basic it is, somehow it equates to being very fun to drive. You know it's not going to be fast. You're not going to be setting lap records. But the thing is, it's going to be fun to drive. It's going to be enjoyable just driving normal in, in uh, an open road, right? You're not going to be speeding at all. <laughs> Even if you wanted to, that's the best part. You can have fun in this car, and I like cars like that. Uh, I always say it's fun to drive a basic car on the limit. It's just as fun, if not more fun, uh, than I'd rather be doing that than drive, you know, a Ferrari in heavy traffic. Like, you're not going to be able to use some of these crazy $200,000 sports cars on the road anyway. I'd rather just have something like this. So this is really cool to see. I find is somewhere around 60 miles an hour, maybe 65. I think this car probably could do for a tune-up, which it'll be getting here shortly. Um, so it's it's a relaxed car. Basically, what you do with a 2CV is you drive it at full throttle everywhere, okay. and then you can control the speed by shifting. That's how you gotcha. decide how fast you want to go. And once you get used to the fact that you're not going to be winning any stoplight Grand Prix's and you might show up no. to your destination a couple minutes later, it really is okay. So the no, ride is really I mean. kind of alarming at first, especially the body roll. But from folks I've talked to, and I do think that this is probably true, it's almost impossible to roll a 2CV. Just the way the suspension and steering geometry That's works. Amazing. When you're right on the limit, and they just stick like glue and they refuse to topple over. So you can see videos of people racing these things and doing really stupid stuff with these things around <laughs> turns. And yes, they'll understeer and that kind of thing. But it looks like they're right on the edge of falling over all the time. Look at that. But oh they just God. don't. You'll squeal the wheel like I did there. <laughs> You'll lean 20, 25 degrees, but you'll probably make it to your destination. That's shiny wild. Side up. So wow. That was a wild ride for sure. Great video. Uh, make sure to check out the whole thing. And of course, check out that channel with the link down there. Um, I can't believe how wild this car is. This is so fun learning about these weird, wacky, and obscure vehicles. Uh, weird and wacky from my perspective. I mean, this is quite normal for some people, right? I mean, uh, some of you watching may have had one of these. Maybe your parents had one. Whatever the case is, uh, there, it's not really a weird and wacky car. So I mean that in a good way. It's just weird and different to me. And uh, it, it really is something special. I, I like it. I can see the resemblance and the comparison uh, to the Beetle of the time. I mean, you can see like kind of the basic shape is very similar. Uh, it still looks a little different than the Beetle. And I don't really know which one looks better. I suppose if the Beetle looks, uh, you know, by technical standards, I guess it looks a little smoother, a little better. Um, but this doesn't look really bad. It's just very interesting to me. <laughs> it is just something else. Uh, really cool car. 
Uh, I cannot wait to discover more about it. I would love to see it in action in various types of environments. I mean, I don't know if they race these things. I don't know if they rally them. Uh, some people said people take them like straight up off-roading. I, I, I am all game to learn more about this thing. It is really such a cool car. And Citroen as a whole, uh, along with a lot of brands in Europe that I'm not familiar with, just seem super, super fascinating, uh, especially them. I know they made some other cars I would love to discover as well. So please keep your suggestions flowing. This is just a great refreshing thing for me to learn about all these different vehicles. And going to that museum really sparked my interest. So uh, look for that video coming very soon. I will link the one where I sat in one of these at the end. So in a few seconds here, so make sure to look for that. And then the full museum tour where I look at a bunch of weird cars that we didn't have here in the States, but some of you may probably recognize. Uh, is coming very soon so please look for that on my channel i can't wait to see what you guys have to say in the comments please throw a thumbs up on this video if you did like it. and of course subscribe to be part of this amazing community we do have here my name is ian you watch the night of your rocker and until next time y'all i'll catch you later